If you're watching this video, you are most likely interested in buying night vision. Either you already own a night vision device or you want to buy a night vision device in the future. And there are a ton of options out there. When I first got into night vision nine years ago, there was not a whole lot of stuff on the market. It has evolved very nicely. There's a lot of really good, good housings on the market. Uh, there's a lot of just good technology you can choose from, but that also makes it a little confusing to the consumer what they should buy. So we have three different helmet setups right here with three different sets of night vision that we just want to talk through, maybe answer some questions for you guys and kind of show some how we're using these different devices. I'll go first. This has been my uh, night vision sort of helmet setup uh, for the last four or five years. Uh, this is the Opscore SF. So it is a ballistic rated helmet, which gives me the ability to mount night vision and whatever else I happen to put on the helmet. Uh, the main thing being Ear Pro, I like to run Ear Pro off the side of my helmet. It's just a little bit more comfortable than wearing hearing protection underneath, which you can do. I've got sword ends because I've just been using sword ends for forever. Uh, they're one of my favorite sets of Ear Pro. They're super slim, so they don't usually interfere with uh, rifle stocks, which I really like. And it's easy to plug in music because I do that when I'm out training. Um, the night vision devices I've used off of this helmet is everything from Panos, 31s, 15s, 14s, pretty much everything out there. Uh, I've been using the RNVGs uh, with this particular setup. I've been using these uh, ever since we started uh, carrying this night vision and a little bit before. I really like this night vision because it's super simple. There's not a lot of stuff going on with it. It's not an articulating goggle. It's sort of a older school aviation style and I just like how simple it is. Uh, it's really easy if I have it deployed to just rock my helmet backwards, look underneath, do all my stuff, drive, whatever it happens to be. And then when I want them out of the way, I just throw them up there. There's no like I don't have to worry about like my IP stops or anything like that. Once it's set to my eyes, it is set to my eyes and I don't have to worry about anything. Uh, it's also a little bit more cost effective because I'm not paying for some extra stuff going on with the unit like these two over here. Um, and it's also got an onboard um, IR illuminator, which I never use. Um, it's just not something I've needed to use, but it's nice for some stuff. I'm using a Wilcox G24. This is actually, I think the old G22 uh, with the extended because I had to get that for my panos. Um, I think now the G24 is made extended, so it's that this is kind of a moot point at this point. Um, I do run a strobe sometimes. Uh, very rarely will I actually uh, activate it for accountability for night shoots, because often it'll be me, Brandon, or other experienced folks. We've got good night vision. We can see where we are on the range. Uh, we don't have to run strobes to know where each other are. Uh, and if I'm not running a battery pack, this is just a fun little uh, trick you can do. If you have a lead weight from like another counterweight pouch or something, I like to actually just coat mine with Velcro and a hook material. I can have this underneath the battery pack to substitute to add more weight. Or in this case, with how light the RNVGs are, all I need is one weight here Velcro to the rear of the helmet and my strobe, and I don't need anything else as far as the counterweight goes. So that's my setup. As you can see, it's pretty simple. I don't have a ton of stuff on there. I do have a Princeton Tech back here for uh, lighting indoors, but to be honest, I have barely and rarely even use this. It would be more useful to mount this to the side of my hearing protection to have forward uh, facing lighting. And that's probably something I just need to do and JB weld this to the side of my sword ends. So that's my setup. So I got the, the same helmet as Lucas. This is a fairly new helmet to me. I was issued a Maritime, so it's actually very similar. But uh, since we got some op scores in recently, I've been wearing this. This is definitely the most comfortable helmet I've ever worn. Uh, I got a little bit more doohickeys than Lucas has. I have two flashlights on the side. I just like redundant lights, so this one's a little brighter than this one. Um, I have real space. If you don't like two lights, then don't put two lights in your helmet. I do. So you go around to the back. Um, a strobe for the same reasons Lucas mentioned. Uh, honestly, I don't think I've ever used one outside of the military, but if there's a ton of people on the range, if I'm ever in that situation, then maybe I'll use it. Probably never will. Um, and then the battery pack for the night vision. Uh, like this just because it kind of serves as a counterweight. So. I actually don't even think I've ever actually used the battery pack because you have to turn this guy on, never turned it on. Um, we don't really use night vision long enough to kill the battery on the night vision uh, in, one set, in, one, in one go. For uh, EarPro, we got autos. These are by far my favorite. They're the, the safest, the best sounding EarPro out there. Um, that's statistically proven as well. Um, and these clamp down super tight. So and they, you can mount these guys on the side rails or kind of like how Opscore has their um, amps. Um, I prefer this setup because they, when you mount these, you can kind of turn these around and in, in any angle you want. So just the one of my personal preference. I've used a lot of headphones, um, used amps, I've used Peltors, used sword ends, used MSAs, um, you name it. Um, 
these are by far the, the best ones I've ever used. On top of the helmet, just have a Velcro thing here for batteries. If I was doing real stuff, probably wouldn't have that on the helmet, but um, just like to be able to hot swap batteries. Usually not for the night vision, just for lasers or whatever, because I have a mall and malls kill batteries pretty quickly. And for the nods themselves on here are some of our company RP and VGs. Um, I actually bought some night vision very recently from Scott directly. Uh, he turned my PVS 15s into some new and better stuff, and I was really torn between the RPs and then the RMVG Alphas. Scott will go over RMVG Alphas, but I didn't end up going with RMVG Alphas. But the reason why I was so torn for the RPs is these are a little bit cheaper than RMVG Alphas that are $1,000 less if I, if I recall, recall correctly. Um, and the obviously the main feature of RPs is that they pan. So you go from the 40, 41 degree field of view from standard duals or PVS 14 to up to a 64, 65 degree field of view. Um, and that's pretty awesome. So the reason why I didn't go with these is kind of just prioritizing what do I do with night vision um, and shooting on the range, the panning isn't always necessary. Driving, if you do a lot of driving under night vision, the panning is definitely the way to go. Uh, that increased field of view is pretty fantastic. But also for me, I have some upper back injuries and I really wanted to go for a lightweight setup. So Scott hooked me up with some lightweight stuff. Um, and that's the main reason why I, why I went RNVG alphas. So. Yeah, and then my setup is, uh, I use a, a couple different helmets. Um, well, a couple different setups, really. Uh, all my helmets are uh, Imtech Flux Carbon Vs, um, which is kind of an obscure helmet. Uh, it's, it's a really nice one. Um, I, I've done some things to it to uh, kind of tailor it to, you know, the things that I do and, and stuff that I, that I work on with the company uh, through Nocturnality. Right now, um, going back to front, um, I use battery. This is actually a, a USB uh, battery pack in here, more for powering thermal devices, um, not compatible with night vision without some special cables, um, although those do, solutions do exist now. Um, this is more of kind of a general pouch. I do have an extra counterweight uh, in here. I'm a little more picky on um, counterweight and, and having things like super balanced. Um, so I, my helmet probably is heavier uh, than either of these two because I have probably more weight, I would say, on the back. Um, I'm a little particular about you know, how the helmet reacts in different situations and different positions, so that's what I do. Um, I got some spare batteries back here as well. You know, you might have to worry about these falling out or, or, or doing other things, but for, for more general use, it is handy to have. Um, the EarPro that I am using um, are the OpsCore amps, uh, the NFMI um, version that you can use uh, with the earplugs in your ears as well and still maintain you know, maximum uh, uh, ability to hear around you. So that's what I like. Um, I, I do rec recommend ear protection if you can, mounted directly to the helmet because it further stabilizes when it's deployed, it further stabilizes the whole thing. Um, you know, again, situationally dependent. I have some, uh, some uh, covers on here on the, the various Velcro points on uh, the helmet to try to break up the signature just a little bit. I, I haven't gone the full step of uh, painting and, and this is actually my only helmet that doesn't have a cover on it. So um, just adding a little, a little bit different um, color profile to kind of break up sort of just this, you know, all black setup. Um, I've got some, some various retaining things on here as well. Uh, it's more because a lot of times I'll be passing this helmet off to um, you know, other, other people, maybe uh, students and stuff like that for they can try out a setup and some, so I, I tend to retain night vision a little bit more for that purpose, not so much you know, because I do it a lot myself all the time. And then the goggles on the front are held on with the, uh, the standard Wilcox G24. Um, I do right now only have one helmet light here, which is just a regular Surefire. Uh, this is a Vampire. I tend to never use the infrared version, you know, or setting on this. Um, it's mostly for white light for looking at stuff a little bit further out than maybe like a, a neck lamp or something like that, or even one of these other, you know, lower output, more discreet helmet lights. Usually I do have one on this side, a, a smaller, like a Princeton Tech on this side, but I've stripped this down a little bit for something that I'm doing right now, um, just to shave some weight so I don't have it on there right now. And then the goggles uh, on the front, these are the new RNVGAs, um, relatively new to the market. It's a new offering that we're doing with T-Rex Arms, so we have the full uh, lineup from RNVG, the standard RNVGs that Lucas uh, talked about that he's running, the RP and VGs, which is the kind of the panning version of those to add field of view. Uh, and now these, obviously, uh, the alpha stands for articulating, so these are the kind that um, you can rotate up out of your direct line of sight and kind of have a little bit uh, of a different setup there. All right, so now we're gonna talk about, we got the three uh, T-Rex goggles uh, that we're offering in partnership with T-Rex Arms. We got them all in front of us. We'll just go over real quick, you know, kind of what the features are and like why you might choose one over the other uh, and some observations after, you know, having had these in their hands for 
uh, a number of months now. So starting with the RMVG, Lucas mentioned like one of his, you know, best features and kind of like why he has, has been running those and likes them is just the simplicity. And uh, from the perspective of nocturnality where we sell, you know, night vision to a wider audience and, and you know, we've been doing it for several years now, um, that's exactly kind of what the RMBG really is all about. And especially from the professional user perspective, um, which can apply to, to any user uh, as well, but professional users who may not be using night vision regularly all the time and like putting in lots of training, uh, they might not have or need to have a mastery of more, you know, kind of fine-tuned features um, because, you know, it does take a little bit of extra uh, work to kind of master, say, like an articulating goggle, like getting the pod set and uh, maybe IP stops or, or other things, the panning features, whatever. If you're somebody who just, you know, wants to pick up a set of goggles and have them work and not really have to think about, you know, other things other than just turning them on, off, and then getting to work, that's what the RMBG really is all about. So definitely agree with that. That's kind of like the baseline. Um, the idea behind these three kind of setups in general is it takes some of the benefits of like a factory night vision device, you know, the L3 Harris PBS 31 approach where you just order one thing and it's all built to the same spec and you get what you get. It's kind of taking the benefits of that approach and then combining it with the benefits of a custom build approach where you can choose tubes and do, you know, housings and, and a lot of customization things, which is good, but also you can get into, you know, kind of down the rabbit hole and away from, you know, what really matters as far as, you know, use and training and all those things. So it's kind of like combining best of both worlds. You have three options and this you know, covers basically all of the spectrum of binocular night vision device features, capabilities, and that type of thing. So you got RNVGs, they're very simple. Uh, this is kind of like an expansion. The RPNVG over here is sort of like an expansion of the original RNVG design. It's pretty similar. It just adds the fact that uh, for one, you can do the panning thing that Brandon talked about uh, to gain up to 65 degree field of view. That's awesome for so many things. Um, honestly, I just always run them pan personally um, because seeing more in the dark without a significant trade-off, which these do not have in my opinion, uh, is always better. Um, these also have a, a often not talked about benefit as well or, or possible feature, which is that the pods can come off the bridge and with an optional power supply that you can purchase, run as independent binoculars. So if you're somebody who wants to do filming, um, who wants to hand one off to a buddy or just keep something smaller, you know, in a pouch for observation, um, that's an awesome thing that you can do just by buying RPMVGs straight out of the gate. Uh, and then finally, now onto the newer, the RNVGA, this is the latest offering. Um, it's kind of like the final, you know, um, capping off the lineup as well, because now we have an articulating uh, solution and articulating goggles are really kind of like, they came into existence when the US military started doing more stuff with night vision basically is, you know, I think how that kind of happened because these sort of allow a little bit of an augmentation of kind of the, the physical size and space requirements for night vision. Um, I've talked about, and we just filmed the product video for this, how this is basically great if you know that you're gonna be wearing night vision for a long extended period of time, but you're not for sure gonna be using it constantly. Um, it's really great to stow in this configuration and cause less fatigue and less strain over a long period of time versus a goggle that's hanging out you know, a little bit further away and changing the center of gravity. It gets a little bit you know, more tiring on your neck and things like that, um, as well as working in you know, a confined space, vehicle, stuff like that. It's just a little bit different approach. Um, and also controlling the power to each pod independently is kind of cool for you know, just general use, um, checking targets and doing all the things where you might have you know, light sources around and you can just easily cut power to the pods and you know, know that they're off. Um, so articulating goggles are, are good just kind of as a general you know, use for the more advanced user who doesn't you know, might actually benefit from some of those features versus someone with RMBG who just wants simple, easy to use, easy to understand, just master the focus and the on off switch and you're good to go. So the other cool thing about the whole lineup of the RMBG series uh, is there's common traits that are shared across all three. So no matter which one you end up choosing, you actually get you know, some, some really awesome and unique benefits regardless of what you choose. And some of those are, for example, they're all made from the same 7075 aluminum material, which the original RNVG, which has been around the longest, you know, it's the ruggedized night vision goggle. Obviously it's in the name and uh, it lives up to that name for sure. Um, all of these are extremely rugged. You could argue maybe that the RNVG is the most rugged because there's no, you know, articulating joints or anything like that. But from a material standpoint, this is the premier, you know, uh, all metal goggle. And now that there's a version uh, using the same material in different configurations, uh, you know, there's, you, you get that latent benefit of durability without having to trade off any other you know, potential features that you might ultimately be looking for. Other shared features across all three, um, they all have external 
uh, battery capability. If, if you just want that capability, Brandon mentioned having you know, functional counterweight with the battery pack. Maybe you're actually using it for you know, extended periods of time where, especially in cold weather, maybe that reduces the, the onboard battery life to an unacceptable level. Now you got, you know, it doesn't matter which one you end up going with you have the ability to run a battery pack. That's super cool. And finally, they all also feature onboard illuminators, standard PBS 14 optics. Um, illuminators, you know, you've never used yours. I don't tend to use mine. Um, they can be cool for signaling and other things. You know, maybe just you're, you're stuck without any other tools and you still at least have some illumination because at the end of the day, the ambient light level in your environment determines uh, the image quality that you see far more than tube specs or anything else. Um, so having something to change the ambient lighting environment in your favor, maybe without going visible, is potentially cool. So they all have that as well. So I guess a quick summary over all of these night vision goggles is kind of like, what do you want the night vision? Uh, what do you want to do with the night vision? Uh, to me, the, if you want to get RNVGs, you just want something simple, something that you don't have to adjust. Uh, just really a quick use case, uh, I'd go with RNVGs. If I want something a little bit more comfortable, I can play with a little bit more. Uh, that's a little more balanced in my head. I'm probably going to go with RNVG alphas. Uh, but if I want a lot more situational awareness with that increased field of view, so like if I'm walking through uh, doing like CQB or walking just through my house, um, LARPing or whatever, or if I'm driving, I'd probably go with RP and VGs. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree. Um, you know, RVGs, there's also an economic, you know, kind of element to it. Um, some people are going to be more comfortable putting the, the cost difference between, you know, the, the options here versus here, maybe towards other gear. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know what your capabilities are, what you need. Um, maybe you can, you know, better utilize that extra cost, you know, towards other things, whereas they're all, you know, highly functional highly rugged night vision devices. Um, the other thing that would be, you know, you might, might factor into your purchase decision is, we mentioned the, the aluminum construction of all these, um, which gets into, you know, weight is a real thing, you know, a concern with night vision. Are you giving up, you know, um, weight to gain the, the ruggedness uh, using the aluminum material? And, and actually all of these options weigh basically the same, right in between, you know, with battery and tubes, 19 to 20 ounces. Um, so compared to like PBS 31 alphas, uh, which are 16 ounces and the light, generally the lightest, you know, kind of ground rated goggle in the world, a PBS 14 is about 12 ounces. Um, your standard, most other night vision besides those, you know, goggle systems tend to weigh between 18 and 20 ounces. So these are right in there despite being, you know, all aluminum construction. Um, so you're really not giving up a ton, you know, to gain that durability aspect. But there's one thing both of you left off. And that is the vibe the RNVGs have for being nostalgic, old school, Modern Warfare 2. So uh, you kind of left that part out. Yeah. It's one reason I like them. They're just, you know, it's very cool for that reason. So like I mentioned before, there is a lot of night vision out there. There's also a lot of companies offering night vision, uh, whether it's like a full custom model, they're building something for you, and maybe there's a lead time associated. Um, here at T-Rex Arms, we're trying to offer something that's sort of more of a factory solution where we have units that are stocked. We have them built to a certain standard, sort of that sort of military standard, kind of like what L3 does with units, and they're in stock ready to go. Uh, we have spec sheets and all of that uh, for the devices. Uh, when you purchase from us, you get a phone call going over your unit, kind of what's going on with it. Um, but we're just trying to simplify the process because the full custom process is great for some customers, but there's a lot of folks out there who just... They just want a device and they want to start training. Uh, they just want to buy something and, and start going to work. Um, so we're trying to offer that service at T-Rex Arms. And thanks to Scott working with us, uh, we're trying to create sort of a hybrid model of selling night vision to people in a little bit more simple fashion uh, than you know making people have to go through a whole custom process in purchasing night vision. Uh, if you guys have any other questions uh, about specific night vision models and some of the intricacies behind units, you can obviously email us at T-Rex, uh, team at trex-arms.com, um, or you can go to Scott directly uh, over at Nocturnality and actually start talking to him about either building your dream custom unit with your specific tubes that you want, your specific housing, uh, but if you're looking for something that might be a little bit more just factory ready to go, uh, we obviously have those at T-Rex Arms and uh, you can check those out. So, hope this was helpful. Thanks for coming out, Scott, and uh, talking to us about this and obviously building these units for us as well. And uh, we will be back soon, hopefully, with more night vision information and training. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters.